Alright, welcome back you guys, and this is going to be the last video for the STDs um, section of the book today. And like I said, there's probably a lot, a lot of new tons of STDs that are being produced and have um, accumulated over the years that are not in this book. And those STDs I'm sure you can find online and stuff like that. It's a scary thing. You never know what anybody has. Alright. So this is larger critters. Crab. These little devils um, are lice that are picked up during sex, either by contact with an infected man's pubic hair or by using infected sheets and towels. Frottage, pussy bumping, is enough to spread them. And you guys know what frottage is, that's like dry humping. They are relatively harmless, though they itch like hell, especially at night. They grow chiefly in the pubic hair, but they have also been found under the arms, around the chest, around the crotch, and between the cheeks of your ass. If ignored, over time they have been known to go exploring southward from hair to hair on the legs, all the way down to the knees. Some idiotic gay men wait until they settle down in their out, settle down in their eyebrows or beard. Crabs are different from head lice that nest only on the scalp. How crabs and head lice known in which direction to march is a mystery. You can see crabs if you look hard enough. They are dark in color and usually live at the base of the hair follicle. They may catch some if you run a fine comb through your pubic hair. They mostly hang upon hair follicles and clutch dead skin, but they're not gorgeous to look at. You may also notice little blood spots on your underwear. The best treatments are liquid preparations called A200 and RID, which can be brought in or bought in drugstores without a prescription. Your site, um, physician, however, may want to prescribe a more powerful treatment called Quell. All medications come with careful instructions regarding their use. Wash your clothing, including the clothing you wore for the past couple of days, towels, sheets, and underwear in very hot water. Be sure to tell your sex partners to treat themselves for crabs, or you'll be reinfecting one another for months. Fortunately, crabs do not carry disease. I couldn't even imagine that. That's so disgusting. Parasites. The gay community have been heavily hit by sexually transmitted parasites, which cause gastrointestinal health problems. Doctors should check gay patients routinely, routinely for parasites, especially if the patients have bowel complaints. Two kinds of parasites have become common among gays and in many straits. Many people who travel to foreign destinations return home with these pets, which enter their bodies through contaminated food and water. The varieties pr tr produce similar symptoms, which can range from an outward sign at all to violent um, dysentery. In between these extremes are such symptoms as soft stools, abdominal cramps, Unusually smelly stools, gas, fatigue, fevers, and chills, loss of appetite, nausea, occasional vomiting, and a feeling of general malaise. Parasites are one of the hazardous parasites are one of the hazards of rimming, but there are many other intermediate and hard to discern methods of transmission. For instance, parasites can be transmitted by sucking someone's cock during anonymous sex. Your partner may have been fucking someone with parasites just before he met you. Hands are frequent carriers of parasites, particularly when they haven't been properly washed after shitting. Diagnosis is difficult unless you go to, to a trained parasitologist or your doctor works with a lab technician who knows what to look for. Tropical disease centers are particularly knowledgeable about parasites. Usually a test is made upon a bit of fecal matter. The parasitologist can simply extract a bit of feces from the anus with a Q-tip, put it on a slide, and examine it under the microscope. A wet stool test, however, is sometimes necessary in hard to detect cases. There are effective medications to rid the body of parasites. Treatment lasts from a couple of weeks to a few months. Don't have sex until your partner says it's okay. Scabby. Scabies are common among gay men. They are tiny parasites, actually called Theracoptes, that live just below the surface of the skin. 
usually around the wrist, but often on the ankles, near the groin, and under the arm. They are itchy, especially at night. They are transmitted by skin contact, but can also be picked up from sheets and towels. If not treated, they will produce they will not produce dangerous symptoms, but they will drive you crazy. They, the preferred treatment is quail lotion, which must be prescribed by your doctor. Scabies are highly contagious. Wow. So, I think pretty much they're covering the major STDs, gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes, uh, scabies. Um, what else am I missing? Hepatitis A, B, and C. Um, venereal wart. Crabs. I mean, there's so many different STDs out there that people probably don't know that they do have. That's why the best way to tell is to get tested. Um definitely getting tested for HIV, like, I go at least every three or four months to get tested. I'm not that very sexually active, but you still never know. So it is best to get tested at least three to four months. Um, like I said, some of the um, diseases, the STDs, sometimes some people don't have any symptoms at all. So you wouldn't even know, you're just having sex and you're spreading it to other people. But I think in most cases, you can tell if you have some type of STD, either through your piss or you notice um, bumps and stuff on you, just stuff that's not usual, and then you're like, where did this come from, or whatever. And if you know that you've been recently sexually active within that time frame, yeah, that might be a sign, so you never know. So getting tested is the best way, you guys. So that was just a few of some of the sexually transmitted diseases. Like I said, I'm sure there's more. I'm going to have to research and find out what those are and let you guys know here on the show. So um, next time I do the Joy of Gay Sex, which is I'm not sure, I'm going to talk about the HIV virus, which it has a whole section on HIV and AIDS because that's also a huge one. Um... Let me see. Yeah, I mean, it's got a huge section to it. But um, I just wanted to basically focus this one on STDs to show you guys that HIV is not the only disease that is out there. There's all kinds of other diseases, and even though a lot of these STDs can be cured, it's still it's still disgusting. It's still a nuisance. You have to be careful who you have sex with, you guys, and always make sure that you are protected or clean, or at least know your partner very well and know that you get tested with them and that they're not carrying around something that they're going to give to you because they may not even know themselves. Alright, you guys, thank you for tuning in to the Joy of Gay Sex series. Please comment. Let me know what you guys think about the topics that I did here today. And I will... Ooh, excuse me. I will be talking to you guys here real soon. Alright. Holla back. Thank you for watching. Holla.